I studied economics, um, found some flaws with the theories that I was being taught at university, decided to research that, fur research that further and found uh, a wide range of problems with the financial system. Um, and I've spent the last couple of years studying that in more detail and trying to find a solution to that. The cause of this crisis is not the cause that's been reported in the press. The real cause is the fact that the majority of money now is created by banks rather than by the government. This leads to the massive levels of debt that we've got, the, the government debt, the co uh, public debt, and consumer debt, and also the, the massive inflation and house prices that we've seen over the last 10 years. It's a common misunderstanding that the banks, that government creates the majority of money. In fact, government only creates around 3% of all the money in any economy. The rest is created by private commercial banks, the, the banks that you see on Main Street, through endlessly reloaning the same money over and over again through this system called fractional reserve banking. The, the accounting rules that govern banks are quite different from the way that you would handle your own money. They know that if they get $100 paid into the bank, on average that customer will only need $10 at a time. And what it means is that the, the majority of the money that's paid into the bank isn't being used at that time. So they use it to lend it to somebody else to make another loan. Now that gets lent and spent goes to another bank account and when it gets to that other bank account they count it as new money. And every time a new loan is made and spent it gets counted as new money and you end up with this, this pile of uh, fictional new money which is also matched by an enormous pile of debt. When it comes to the issue of the subprime crisis, if you lend a billion dollars on one day, you find the bank will find a billion dollars in the bank the next day, which funds another billion, which is why such phenomenal amounts of money were lent to people who couldn't afford to repay it. And then, as, as we know now, they defaulted and that triggered a whole house of cards. The way that we can stop this is we need to change a few accounting rules to prevent the banks from creating money. Then we will allow the government to start creating money it, to replace the money that was created by the banks. However, the key difference is that the money that government creates isn't backed by an equal amount of debt. It's essentially debt free. Now, the difference between this is massive. If you imagine you're trying to drive a car and you're pressing the accelerator and the brake at the same time. This is the effect of bank-created money. You, you add a stimulus to the economy, but you're also slowing it down by adding this debt. Now, if you have government-created money, you're just putting your foot on the accelerator. It really, really helps the economy, but it doesn't add that debt, which slows the economy down as well. It also doesn't lead to systemic crises every few years, such as the, the major financial crisis that we've just gone through. Now, there's three steps to it. The first is to put the Treasury back, the Federal Reserve back within the Treasury, um, integrate those two. Uh, at the moment, the Federal Reserve is a private bank, and this leads to some concerns that it might be working more for the interest of banks than for the interest of the United States government and the people of the US. The second aspect of this is to essentially prevent the banks from creating money. It's a few technical changes to the, the way that banks account for what they have, um, which would prevent this money creation process. Then the third way, the third aspect of this reform is to distribute new money into the economy through government spending on projects such as infrastructure, education, health, which would really allow um, US citizens to get these benefits without actually needing to pay higher taxes or to bear the cost themselves. It doesn't have to be the way it is at the moment. We can reform the system without harming any sector of society and that would bring massive benefits to both the citizens of the United States 
the government and to businesses and even the banks themselves. We can lay a more stable foundation for the economy.